Hey guys, welcome back to the Steel Forms. Today we've got a quick video for you on how to use the beam stiffeners component. We try to keep these videos under 15 minutes to try and get in, get you the information you need to know, and then get you on your way. You know how detailers are very, very busy, so we try and keep these short. But if you got more questions, let us know down in those comments. We'll try and get back to you as soon as possible, or head over to the unofficial SDS2 users group. That's reddit.com slash r slash SDS users. Hope to hear from you back here on the Steel Forum. With me. Gonna kind of breeze through that very quickly. Edit this again. This went so bad. I'm too lazy to spin the model around. Maybe it's in the help file. What's funny is I would just cut it out. Would be much happier. Oh, if it's just kind of cartooned in there and just pop that in and see what it looks like. I do want to see what that's all about. All right, so Try the first it. thing that we're going to want to do is add the component with our keyboard shortcut using AC. And let's get that beam stiffeners beam component thrown in. We're going to start off by putting in it as even spacing just to demonstrate how that works. Now, what this is going to do is it's actually going to... You, you plug in a number of spaces that you want, and it's just going to end-to-end -end space them accordingly. So in this case, I'll put in, let's say, eight spaces, and that's what I get, eight spaces. Now, if I want to throw these on the far side, I could throw it to far side. I could throw it to both sides if I want, and it just automatically updates it for you. Now, the other thing that we can do, we, we briefly touched on this in the last video, is auto width. If you've got that turned on, it's going to trim it back so that it is a whole, it seems to be a whole number that clears within the toe flanges. So in this beam's case, I believe this is going to be about two inches to stay inside the toes. <clears throat> oh, that's right. We changed the beam size on this. That's three inches now. Okay. Okay. So we've got three inches there and we're staying inside the toes of the flange. And that's pretty much it as far as the even spacing goes. But a lot of times you're not going to be doing nine equal spaces, eight equal spaces. You're going to get told, put them at 24 inches on center. So what you want to do is instead go with fixed spacing. Now for fixed spacing, you just set in what your spacing is here. Let's say uh, we'll go two feet. I'm going to make this even at both ends. So one foot four. <clears throat> so now I've got even spacing all the way down. Or not, I'm sorry, not even spacing, uh, a fixed spacing of two feet all the way down with my minimum distance at each end. Now, there is a connection to a beam over here that I would be running a foul of, so I don't want my first stiffener to start until I get past this point. So if I take a rough measurement just to see about where this is going to land. All right, so I think two foot six will clear us. So if I tell it two foot six is the minimum distance off the right end, then I wind up with my stiffeners all clearing that connection, and they're all still spaced at the two feet on center that I requested. Okay, so at that, can you move just one stiffener if you need to? Yeah, so if you want to move just a single stiffener, there's a couple different ways you can do it. If you're doing it with fixed spacing, <coughs> I think at this point you're going to be kind of stuck. Let me just try this out. Uh, what do we want to do here? Let's go five foot four so it'll be obvious. I believe with fixed spacing, it's going to keep it fixed no matter what, and I can't adjust this. Let's try that. So if I do that, you see it doesn't actually move it. But if I go in and say 5 foot 4, again, and lock the spacing values, now they're not going to go anywhere, and it will put them where I tell it to. So if you're using fixed or even spacing and you want to make that adjustment, you have to make sure that you check off the lock stiffener spacing values. Otherwise, it is going to just realign them according to the schema that you've told it in the first place. Awesome. Good tip. <clears throat> so the next thing we want to look at is what if we want our beam or our stiffeners to be at very particular locations? Now, I've laid out a patchwork of locations, these red lines. So let's grab that stiffener again. I'll just select it before I get back into that plan view and edit. And now I tell it pick points. Okay. I'm just going to throw in a little offset here. So for pick points, when I close this, it's then going to ask me to pick locations. Now you can pick them on the beam. You can pick them alongside the beam. We'll just kind of go back and forth all the way up this thing. And you know what, just to make it a little more simple to view visually, let's make these stiffeners bigger. So let's ditch auto width and let's go with one foot. 
So now these are sticking out pretty far, and I can see them from the top flange view. <clears throat> so you see that these are now, even though I picked over here, it still brings that line in plane with the beam member itself, and it's put them centered back on the web where you would expect. Now, one thing to pay attention to, you see how we've got these at the face of the stiffener. These are 3 8 inch stiffeners, and I did apply that offset of 3 16 So the whole point to doing that was to show you how that offset is going to work. So what I need to do is pick the points over again so that the pick points are affected by that offset. So I'm going to pick my points over. And now when I zoom in, you'll see that we are now centered on the stiffener plate because I have zero offset from that center line. Now, if you want to change these, as you've seen, all I need to do is unlock that and then click OK, and that will allow me to pick points over again. But let's say I just want to adjust the one and I know how far I want it to go. <clears throat> or if I want to delete it out entirely. If I want to delete it out entirely, I can right-click the row and hit Delete and then relock and now you'll find that my second stiffener that row I deleted is gone and I can also edit these the same way so if I just want to take this unlock and let's go to five feet and then relock it always have to be sure to relock it then you'll see that it pushes that off now if I forget to hit lock change it though I may I will now be asked to pick new stiffener locations. So now I'll have to choose over again. All right. So one of the things that we're hoping that can get added into this component, because this is something we face a lot when we're scrubbing, is the ability to add a section automatically to that first, middle, or last stiffener um, with checkboxes. Hopefully we can get that rolled in later. That would be really nice to see. Uh, cutting sections and, and adding views takes up a lot of time with scrubbing, and it's, it's it's very counterintuitive to kind of stop and start that process. So we'd love to see that in here. Since these components have the power to create those views, we think it should be doing that automatically. So hopefully in a future update, they'll get to that. So let's dig a little bit more into some of the other settings that we've got available to us. So if we scroll down, you can obviously change the plate thickness. You can change the plate width if you've turned off auto width, and you've got some depth options. Typically, we run with full depth. But you can do top and bottom flange half depth. You can run it to the K. And you can also set a user depth. So let's say I want to run it up from the bottom flange by a user depth of, oh, let's go four inches. Let's see what that one looks like. Okay. Now I could do the same thing. Let's say I just want it running down from the top. Same user depth. And now I'm at the top. And this is a nice way to pop in some kicker gussets if you want to do something like that. That'll work out for you. The other thing to pay attention to is, let's say you're going to have this beam galvanized and you need larger clips to allow that zinc to flow more easily through. So if you want to do two by two clips, you can just do that and you'll get the larger clipping. You guys will remember from our, our video on the nailer holes component, when you need to have more than one set of dimensions for these things, you can stack these components on top of each other. So if you need to have one style stiffener at the top, and then a different style stiffener at the bottom, you can take that component and apply it twice and edit those values separately. And you will get two sets of components with those different things. Yes. Now, just to, just to kind of build on to that, let's say I need to have a set of these at top and bottom, and I want them in the same location. I can click on that component, right-click, copy component, and then click that same beam, and then hit Escape. I now have these components are stacked on top of each other. So as it is would be bad. But if I just double click on one of them, I can now set this to the bottom user depth. And now I've got top and bottom. Be careful too when you're in that copy component routine because it doesn't stop after you've copied one. You do have to hit escape and you, you won't really notice it. Like there's no graying out of the screen or anything like that to let you know that you're still copying components. A lot of times you'll end up with six, eight copies because you forgot to hit that escape button. Right. The, the only thing that it tells you to indicate that you're still in the tool is up at the top here. So I have to move off into the dark space. Locate member to copy to. As long as it says that, you're dangerous. You've got to be 
aware of where you're clicking and don't don't click the same member twice unless you mean to because it will just stack those if i sit here and click this over and over and over again and now i get out of it if i swipe over this oops uh, you know what let's just edit the beam we'll see it that way you'll see that I'm going to have a whole ton of stiffener components into this. And there they all are. So now I'm going to have to delete these all out. So my non-SDS detailing note here for stiffeners is watch out for those welds, uh, especially with, with full depth stiffeners where they're very <laughs> tall beams, stuff like that. You can save your fabricator to customer a lot of money is if you can ask if you can stitch weld these. It doesn't seem like all that much time, but when these apply over and over again by stitch welding those stiffeners, which the ASC says for most locations, that's going to be just fine. You can save your fabricator some real money. So keep that in mind. Yeah. Now that is something that you don't have direct access to, even though you can put the welds in, it's just, is there a weld or not? You can set it to fillet, square groove or bevel groove, and then you can set the weld size and the tail text if you want. Yep. But you can't actually specify a, a stitch weld within this component. So you do need to be aware of that as you're adding it. You can also set your bottom and top clearances if you want to keep a little bit more or less away from the flanges. You know, if, if you're having to deal with fit up issues and you don't want to run a 16th at top and bottom or an eighth at the bottom only, if you need to go something more extreme, you can set that here. Just for extremity sake, I'll put in one so we can see that it does stop plenty short of that uh, flange. And all you detailing department managers out there, you should have an established setback dimension for those stiffeners. If you're working for in-house for a fabricator and you sublet detailing, uh, make sure that that's part of the data that you pass to your detailer to let you know how you like to see things. We have had it in the past where we leave that dimension at, say, a 16th total or an eighth total, 16th top and bottom, and later the fabricator questions on it, questions us on it, wants us to do it another way. And that can result in a lot of extra work, especially if it's caught too late. So if that is important to you, for most people, it's not really important. 16th or 8th doesn't matter that much. But if it is important to you, make sure to pass that information on to the people who are detailing it and pass it on in a written, consistent format. Absolutely. Okay, so we've got a couple other little settings I want to play around with just to demonstrate how they work. One of them is going to be having single versus double stiffeners. So right now we're running with singles. If I wanted to have these in pairs that are coordinated about that work point, I would set it to double. And now I can choose either the stiffener face or the stiffener center line as far as the reference point uh, going back to my picked point and then how far from that point to have these pairs. So if I want these pairs to be four inches apart, I set this to two inches. And now I've got these spaced out. And I actually have that backwards. Is that two inches or is that four inches between those? Looks like four inches. It does look like four. I just want to be certain. So if I take this beam. And actually, let's, let's do that. We'll do it from the component first. So you can set the orientation to normal, vertical, or rotate. Now, vertical is just plumb. That will always be vertical. Normal is going to keep it normal to the beam. So if the beam begins to rotate, if it's sloping, it will stay you know, obviously perpendicular to the member line. You can also select rotate and you can put it on whatever angle you want. So now I can just put these in at 45s even though the beam is straight. All right, guys, that's it for this video on the beam stiffeners component. Hope you learned a lot. Uh, you may have noticed that there is a couple of settings that we didn't cover. They all relate to the extend seat option. Uh, the idea of that seems to be to extend the width of the flange using a uh, flat bar along the flange. doesn't quite seem ready yet. It doesn't have setbacks. It just seems to run that plate for the entire length. It doesn't have welds. So uh, we left that out for now. It's not quite ready yet, so I, I wouldn't suggest using it yet. But if you do have any other questions, please let us know down in those comments. Hit those like and subscribe buttons, and we'll have more videos coming up for you soon here on the Steel Forum.